So today I've got one mission and one mission only and that is to break a long-standing PB but more about that when I get this lot to the swim. Note to self, if you are going to push your barrow a long way, make sure your wheel is pumped up because that was seriously hard. But we are here in the Chosen Swim on a lake that can pretty much only be described as fishing the ocean. And there is no joke intended there because this lake is called the Ocean Pit. It nearly covers 100 acres of water. So a daunting expanse where you've got to try and catch a fish in. But like I said, one mission. And that is to break a long-standing PB. Now it's not a fish that everyone is fond of. I don't even fish for them loads myself, but when they get big, they are good fun. And that is the bream. So the target we need to beat is 11 pound and 10 ounces. I really want to catch, to be honest, a 12 pounder. And there is a real genuine chance if we can find him in this massive sheet of water that we can get across one. So we haven't just rocked up in the swim and hoping for the best. We have done some research. We've spoken to friends who fish it quite a bit. And before we got the camera out, we got the lead rod out and a marker lead and we found a nice gravel area. So I'm pretty confident we're in a good zone and within that zone found a nice spot. So there's absolutely no rush really to get fishing. Most of these big fish, certainly the ones that we want to catch, it's going to be a lot of action at night time. So I think what I'm going to do is get the gear unloaded, get myself set up nice and comfortable, mix some bait up, we'll get it on those spots and then hopefully as the evening draws on we can get amongst a few big breeds. Smells good and hopefully that is going to do the job for us. I've mixed up a really simple mix here. Not perhaps your traditional bream baits like some people expect maggots, casters, worm. They're expensive for one thing. We're going to need a fair bit of bait today. Like I said, it's a big bit of water fishing for big fish and we're trying to attract them in. So we've gone to sort of, it's like a mini carp fishing approach, I guess. So some mini boilies crushed up, pellets, hemp and corn. They are sort of slightly cheaper than the natural baits and hopefully a bit more selective. So as I said, we're gonna be putting quite a bit out. So I've mixed up sort of half a bucket here and I go straight in with all of it. Three rods on a spot on a nice little gravel hump that I've said. And this is gonna take me a little while to spawn out there. So that's job number one. Before we get the rigs and the rods ready, we'll talk to you for those in a moment, is get this on that spot. So that's the last of the spawns. I put about half a bucket, which I'm probably going to say is about three kilos. It's a fair bit of bait, but not ridiculous amounts. But like I said, I'm sort of trying to fish for a few fish, hopefully. And when bream feed, they're kind of like the best way I can describe it is probably like a herd of cows. They come in and just hoover everything up. So I need to make sure there's enough bait to get a few fish feeding. And not only that, I mean, with the best will in the world, we've tried to put ourselves in a good area but they could be anywhere in this massive expanse of water and you are relying on them finding you a little bit. So a bed of bait is certainly going to help that. So that's the bait put out there. I'll quickly talk you through the rigs and then we'll get them out there and see what the even brings. So just a quick look at the tackle before we get out there and fish in. And we've got the Coram Big Water Rod. I think it's a pretty apt name for where we're fishing, but I need it to be fairly strong because the spot is about 70 yards. So we need to get out there nice and comfortably. Though we're coupled up with a bait runner reel loaded with 10 pound line. Nothing complicated there. And that transforms onto the rig as well. I absolutely love method feeder fishing. Whatever I'm fishing for, I just think they work and present such a neat pile of bait with no tangles. So I've got a Dura method feeder. A short braided hook link that's actually a ready tied one. I didn't used to trust ready tied back when I was younger, but generally now I think they're so good 
it just saves you time tidying yourself. And I'm loading that with a 10 mil boilie tipped with a little yellow topper just to try and imitate a bit of corn. So the bait itself is reasonably big for bream, you would say, but like I said, we're trying to be a little bit selective. And all that's left to do on that is load the feeder up with some soaked two mil pellets, get it out there, and it presents a nice little mouthful of bait ready for when the fish come along later. So there we go, that's all three rods out. I probably should explain why I wasn't in a real rush to get them out earlier. So it has been really hot and sunny today and the water here is really crystal clear. Now I'm not saying you wouldn't catch during the day because fishing is fishing and you can never say never, but form says and my thinking makes me believe that it really wasn't the time to get a bite. So I want to make sure that everything was prime for the evening that we're now coming into as it gets dark and then obviously into the morning. So I'm happy now that the fishing time has started and we can really concentrate on a few fish. So like I said, rods are out, come to get the kettle on and see what the evening brings. have a quick refresh of the rods not for any particular reason I just think that with the little method feeders it puts out a nice little fresh pile of bait there again reset the traps I think just sometimes you feel a little bit more confident after a recast so I'm gonna get all three done nice and quick and then we we'll get some food on As if you've got a proper actual food bag with some like well, yeah. actual, or actual like food. food in there. That's good food. What have you got in there? Loads. This Look is the main that. thing. Chicken. The heat is tonight. I reckon everyone who follows our channel was expecting another takeaway review. But we've gone up market and homemade, or bank made should we say, chicken fajitas. So, you say upmarket, mate. I've never tried your cooking. Well, it could be downmarket, <laughs> but I'll tell you that. I promise you, they're going to be upmarket. I've got some fajita hacks. What have we got here? I've got some chicken. Do we? Look at that. Yeah, you've oh, not, I you mean, have not done that. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> I didn't do that. Lou done that, but I'm going to cook them. What are the Doritos for? Oh. Doritos <laughs> in a wrap. If you've not had that, you haven't lived. I'm actually quite intrigued. You'll be like, trust me. Trust me on this one. I think we need to get it going on. Tell me I'm not wrong about those Doritos. <laughs> they are an edge, 100%. I will be doing that when I get I told you you would, I told you, you don't believe me. They're really, really good. Right, so I'm Mike.
Well, what has been a few seconds for you in the edit is an awful lot of work for us. So we're going to be really honest here. We're now a couple of weeks on and we've had a few sessions of not a lot <laughs> happening. And I think to be fair, if you really honest in fishing, sometimes we aim for the stars and perhaps we're a little bit naive that we could come to a hundred acre gravel pit and catch some big bream straight away. But every time we came, I feel like we've learned a little bit and now I am connected to a fish. We've had nothing up till this point, but we're only about an hour into darkness now and a first fish coming to it. So I'll have a look and see if we can get this one in. Then we'll talk you through some of the stuff that we've changed. <laughs> so happy to see a bream. Quite a nice one. Well, that has brought a big smile to my face. I think when you work for them, they feel a little bit harder. As I said, a few trips with unfortunately nothing. And I always say with fishing, it's never a wasted trip as long as you feel like you've learned something. But that is good, good news. Like I said, it's been about two hours into darkness and these fellas don't normally feed on their own. So let's pray there's a few more of them. But the all important question, I guess, is how big is it? Because I've not caught a big bream for a while, so I wouldn't even like to have a guess. So what I'm gonna do is pop this one on the scales, get the sling zeroed, and we'll have a confirmed weight. 11 pound. Three. <laughs> that is not bad for a first fish. A double figure for the first one. That will do. But there, mate. Get in there. Looks mega in that clear water. And he's off. Put that oh, there. <laughs> Eleven three. I think I underestimated that a little bit to be honest. Like I said, I haven't caught a big bream for a while. And I sort of yeah, I didn't think that would make double, but that's a great I'm not gonna say start because we're a few <laughs> sessions in now, but it's a great start to this session. But let's get another bait out there. Typical, typical bream fish. And we slip that one back and just like buses, they come together and another one on pretty much straight away. And it, just, it is just, you've got to be on them. You've got to find the fish. And once you've found them, it feels like it's easy. Although, trust me, if you would have um, seen me after any of the other set, <laughs> you would have thought it was far from easy. But Another one coming towards the net. And again, this feels like it's fairly decent. So let's hope another good one to show you. That's another nice fish. Come on. Get in there. That is two bream in probably five minutes. <laughs> oh no! Right, you can rest there. You can rest there. You'll be fine there. I mean, again. <laughs> this is ludicrous. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> that is Let me crazy. come around this side of the light. That is absolutely insane. That is now almost 
a triple take. Oh, it feels good to to sort of get it right, I'm going to say, because what we were going to do is after that first one, put it back, put the kettle on and talk you through a little bit about what we've changed, because we haven't just blindly kept stabbing in exactly the same thing. Now, we are actually in the same swim. We've tried a couple of others, but we're in the swim that you first initially saw us in. And yeah, it just a few tweaks to the rigs, a little bit to the bait from a bit of research and what we fought and learnt from other sessions. And hopefully, well, it already has, hasn't it? It's already come together in quite spectacular fashion. And I will be honest, after a couple of hours of darkness, I sat there and said to Chris, it's going to be another one here. It's going to be another blank and just staring into the black abyss of nothingness. And then as soon as that alarm bleeps a couple of times, suddenly those spirits are lifted. But they do put up a good fight, to be fair, for a bream. And it's a bit, something a bit special about not quite knowing how big they are. Like we said from the very start, there is a genuine chance of a PB here. I'll tell you what, the first one, we weren't far off. I don't know how big that second one is. And here comes number three. Here he comes. His buddy's sitting in there with him. Come on. Whee! Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> Two in one there. Nice. Well, my attempt at a bit of bream juggling not the easiest fish to hold in a brace shot but what about that for a crazy spell of fishing i'll tell you what we'll do so we'll get these weighed individually and we'll see how big they are so one thing there's no mistaking with bream is it the amount of slime <laughs> pounds and 10 ounces not quite double that one and the second one in that short spell <laughs> 11 pound and one ounce that is three bites over 30 pound of bream and what an insane average size that is but we're still hunting down that pb <laughs> get these back because currently we haven't got a rod fishing and we've got a PB to break. I'm absolutely covered <laughs> in bream slime but do I care. Yes. <laughs> right, get the rods back out and then get the kettle on. Well, what an enjoyable but hectic few minutes that was. I finally got the kettle on. Hopefully I can enjoy a celebratory coffee. And I did say, uh, now I'm not playing a bream or wrestling with them, I can sit down and talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff we've changed. But before I do that, I'm gonna ask for some of your help. Now, as you can see here, we've got some really good fishing lights helping us film at night time, but I think it's time to invest in new equipment something that attaches to the camera and dedicated for the job. So drop a comment if you are an expert in the field and you know the correct light and attachment we should be using, because I think it's about time we probably invested in it. But let's move on to the fishing. Now, I'm not gonna go through the rig change because I think that generally will be better to show you in the morning when it's light. But one thing we have done is, like I said, it's been a couple of really unsuccessful sessions, but you always take something away from it. We've managed to see fish and try and sort of locate them into an area. Just turn this kettle off. But one thing that really helped us out is a good friend posted on Facebook just literally a couple of days ago that he'd caught nine bream in a match. 
So that really did make us home in to an area where we believed those fish were. And one thing that he was doing was fishing match tactics. So maggots, casters, worms, grambit, that sort of stuff, regular casts. So it got me thinking, I probably should add some naturals to the mix. So on this session, something we haven't done in the others, is we have added the natural element. We've still got the pellets and the boilies, but in there, worms, maggots, and casters as well. And I generally think, well, three bites would prove it, that it may have made a difference. And speaking to lots of people and doing a lot of research and looking at the water, I now think we've got like almost a spot within a spot. I feel the area in this sort of middle section of the lake has always been popular for bream, but we now feel like we're really fishing on that sort of gravel bar perfectly. And yeah, like I said, it seems to make a difference. So I am gonna have this coffee because I probably shouldn't be drinking coffee at this time. It is quarter to one in the morning. So there's a potential that one of these rods could go, but if they don't, I'm gonna get in the bag after coffee and we will catch you in the morning. We can take a little bit more detailed look at the rig change as well. Oh, or maybe not. <laughs> you <get it> right. <laughs> <laughs> not even a chance to enjoy my coffee what about that and another one real little tiny bite really sort of just a drop back but I mean bream they aren't known for their their outrageous bites or fights but they're just heavy like fishing quite a way out but just heavy fish and just slowly plodding and I just, we've been close, haven't we? We've been really close to that PB in three bites. And there's something special about fishing for a, a, a big average. Like we know that every fish is gonna be, you know, well, it is a specimen size fish. And there's just something about fishing for those size fish because, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think a lot of people are the same. They're not the easiest fish to get excited about, but when they're big, you know, they are a bit more special and a bit more worth catching. So, yeah, this one does feel nice again and another one coming to the net. What? There's <laughs> another good one. Just a crazy average size. That is another nice one. Probably the liveliest it's been since it's got on the mat. These little hooks go in well. There we go. That's a nice fish. And that is another wicked fish. I think my love for Bream has been rekindled. I really fell out of love with him after they made me work so hard for him, but I think when the stars align, they just align properly. And that's what bream fishing is known for. That, you know, they feed like, you know, they're literally like cows. They all come in together and you can really have a good field day on them. But not many people would be up past midnight trying to catch <laughs> bream. And to be fair, normally I wouldn't. But like I said, that PB is just, feels very very close I haven't weighed this one yet I don't think it's going to get there but it's another good fish so let's pop it on the scales well you didn't quite make the magical double figure nine pound and eight but still a mega fish Well, we have just had first light, absolute carnage. It went quiet for about two or three hours. And then literally as this light broke, I've had another double take. And behind me is something that I think could be quite big. Now, in all of that, you're probably not gonna see because it is really dark, but the camera is not gonna quite pick it up. Listen to this, because all through what happened out there, this is what Chris was doing. Typical, absolutely 
difficult. I don't think you would have seen that, but he slept through the whole thing. So I'm going to give him probably another 10 minutes snoring away. And then I'm going to get him to film these because it should be then light enough for the camera to pick it all up. So Chris is not very happy. I've woken him up, <laughs> but we can actually appreciate one of these beasts in daylight and just see how special they are. Now I've weighed this one and this one is 10 pounds and six ounces. So another double figure fish. And I think the other one is bigger and I don't know if it's gonna be a PB, but there's a chance because it looks a little bit bigger than this. So. Without further ado, let's get this one slipped back, get the other one weighed, and let's see how close, or even possibly, if we can get to that PB mark. Whee. Right, let's take a look at the other one. In there, 11 pound 14 ounces. I knew it was bigger, and that is a PB. That is what we came for. We said there was a chance, ah, and after all that work, boy, does that <laughs> feel good. Get in there, right? Okay, let's have a proper look at him. And there it is in all its glory, my new. PB bream, 11 pound and 14 ounces. And I know we've said it many times, bream aren't people's favorite fish, but when they get this size, they are a pretty special creature. And I urge anyone to go out and give it a go to fish for them if you can fish for specimen sized fish. They really are pretty special. But I don't want to keep it out too long. We've got that rig chain to talk you through, but we need a few snaps of the photo album and then we're gonna get it back. What a special fish that is. Hold it there and get his breath. Yeah, so I right. get in there. That <laughs> made me really happy. And I know we said when we first started this campaign. I guess you could call it a campaign now because it's been a few trips. Most of the fishing is at night, so I think the best fishing is probably beyond us now, but there's always chance of a bite in the early morning. So I'm gonna get some fresh bait out there, get them all primed again, and then we'll talk you through that rig. So while I'm just freshening these rods up, let's talk you through the rig change. Now, it's not a complicated or a new rig whatsoever. More importantly, is the reason why I changed. So we were fishing with the Dura method feeders, which to be fair, generally are my favorite way if I could do it effectively. But I think what was happening, this is a big windy water. Certainly on the last couple of times I've been back, it's been really windy. And I'm a little bit convinced they weren't heavy enough, the ones I had, to hold bottom in the wind with the undertow. So I have switched to a standard lead clip setup. You've all seen them before, nothing complicated about them. A short braided hook link and then a 10 mil bait with a little topper on there as well. So yeah, like I said, the rig's not that important, but I can now put on a three and a half ounce lead, a nice heavy lead, and I feel I can really anchor it down and it's staying on top of that bar. And then all I'm doing to finish off the rig is popping on a little mesh PVA bag, 
just to stop any tangles and also gives a nice little pile of hook uh, freebies around your hook bait so there we go yeah like i said it's not a complicated rig but the reasons why I changed is the important thing so let's get it back out there see if we can have one more fish in this morning i'm probably only going to give it a couple of hours because as i did mention genuinely the best fishing is behind us but i'd love to finish on one more for the cameras in daylight Well, that's the bait out, the last of the rod sorted. I'm going to give it a couple of hours and the fingers are crossed. Well, that is it, as expected. It did get slower as soon as it got to daylight, but who am I to complain? Eventually we found them, and I think there's a real moral to this video in the fact that never ever give up. And as long as you're going fishing, if you're not catching, they're just stepping stones to the next time you go to hopefully improve and catch some more. And if you take anything from it is look on social and ask questions, don't be afraid to try and get information from other people. It really helped us out on here today. And that is what loads of people make videos for. It's exactly why we make videos. So if you have got any questions about anything, pop them in the comments and we will try and help you. I will always try and do the best I can to help people catch fish. Because moments like that when you break your PB are so, so worth it. But that is it from us today. I think, I can't quite remember, I think it might have even been four doubles and then topped off, like I said, with that magical PB moment. So yeah, really chuffed with it. I'm glad it's done. Maybe I will come back because I think there's a real big one in here, especially with the average size. So it might be another one for next year in the future. But for now, in this session, that is it from us. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you again on the next one.